OK, so I've created a test called Tables and I've copied all the code from the first lesson. If you recall, this test searches for a product and then adds it to the shopping cart. I've encapsulated the code in a region tag so that I can minimize this and continue with the code. OK, let's have a look at the web page. We're on the shopping cart page and the MacBook is in the shopping cart. If we right click on the link and inspect Element with Firebug, we can see what's going on in the HTML. So the first things first, we have a table tag with an ID. We also have a table header, a table footer and then the table body. OK, let's copy the ID and create our variable shopping cart to store the table and using driver.findElement by ID and paste it in. If you recall, the table header and table footer can also contain rows, so we'll demonstrate the difference that this can cause. Let's have a variable called total rows and using the shopping cart dot find elements by tag name and we'll use tr. And we'll have another variable called body rows and using the shopping cart dot find elements and this time we'll use xpath and pass in tbody forward slash tr. So here we can see the table body has one row, the table footer has one row and the table header has one row. So the first command will return 3 and the second one using xpath will return 1. So once we have the table row, we can go through each of the table data tags and confirm or validate the presence of certain text. In this case we only have one row but if you had multiple rows then you would use a for each command to loop through them. So each row has a collection of TD tags, so using row.findElements by tag name TD will return the collection of the table data tags. The first TD tag has an image in there. We can confirm that the image is in fact present when we add a product to the car. So let's have a variable image and using the index 0 of the table data collection we can find the element by tag name and pass in image. And we can have a simple assert that the image is not null. The second TD tag has the product name and we can copy that and confirm it is in the correct place. We have a product name and using the index TD1 and simply the text value. We can have an assert to check the product name is equal to what we expect. So product name dot equals and paste it in. Next we have the edit link which we can ignore. The price, quantity and subtotal are the important ones. The unit price is the fourth TD tag. We have a span and another span with the text. So we can just simply use the text of this TD tag. Let's copy the code from here and change the variable name to unit price. And same here as well, the index is 3 and change the text to the price of the product which is £2,299.99. The next TD tag contains a text box. The text box has an input tag and the value is set to 1. So the value attribute is what we need to be looking for. So we have var quantity equals tds4 dot find element by tag name input. And then an assert is true that the quantity dot get attribute value dot equals 1. And then finally we have the subtotal which we can simply copy from here. Change the variable name to subtotal price. and the index is going to be 5. Finally, let's add a breakpoint here. In the test view, refresh this and debug the test. OK, we have a total rows as 3 and the body rows as 1. Step through the code, we have 7 TD tags. The first image tag has been found and we can see a few of the properties of the image. The product name is also found. Let's have a look at the unit price. That's okay. 
we found the quantity and you can see the properties of the text box. And finally the subtotal. Let's stop the test. Let's make a small change to the test. If you were testing this for real, you wouldn't simply compare the values. You would multiply the unit price with the quantity and confirm the subtotal matches what you expect. Let's create a new variable for the quantity value and cut the code from here. Now we can access the quantity value. Create a new variable, calculated subtotal, and we want to convert the unit price to a double and replace the pound sign with a blank string and then multiply this with the quantity value converted to an integer. So this will now calculate the subtotal price and store it in a variable. We can use this variable and replace the text in the assert over here. And we also need to convert the subtotal price from the web page into a double and replace the pound sign. This will allow us to compare the calculated subtotal price with the price that we retrieved from the web page. Let's add a breakpoint here and debug the test. OK, the quantity value is stored as 1. The subtotal has been calculated as 2299. The subtotal price has come through and is being stored as a string. And finally, the assert is comparing the two values. So now we can easily extend this test to change the quantity value and it will automatically calculate the subtotal price for you.